Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads brings you a popular version of Friedrich von Proto's immortal opera, Martha, starring Gordon McRae and his celebrated guest, Gladys Swarthout. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another famous drama with music is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, I shall be Lionel, and Miss Gladys Swarthout will sing the title role in our Railroad Hour impression of Martha. hear that? That's Martha, the most beautiful, the most wonderful. Now, but wait a minute. We're getting ahead of our story here. Let me start by explaining something. You see, back in England in the days of good Queen Anne, they had a health problem, the same as we have today. And that's why they started the fair at Richmond, where all the servants gathered in holiday dress to look for employment. Right now, I'm bound for the Richmond Fair to find a good maidservant to work on my farm. Here's the singing, here's the singing, Richmond Fair is now beginning. Here's the singing, here's the singing, Richmond Fair is now beginning. Come away, baby. Sir Tristram. Yes, Lady Harriet. What is that singing? Well, I believe it is the servant people marching to the fair at Richmond. How happy they sound. I wish that my life could be so full of songs. What you need is diversion, Lady Harriet. I shall take you to luncheon at the donkey races. How dreary. A oh, boat excursion. Oh, drearier yet. I might put my arm about your waist and plant a kiss upon your brow. That, Sir Tristram, would be dreariest of all. Uh, I am always playing Romeo without a Juliet. I have an idea. Let us go to the fair at Richmond. Impossible. It is for peasants. A change of clothes will turn you into a... Uh, Bob, the plowman. What a ghastly thought. And I shall don a homespun country dress and become the maid servant. Come, plowman, Bob. We're off to the fair of Richmond. Drive and bust the masses come. The fair shall now begin. Show your rosy faces and the hearts of two children. Drive and bust the masses come. The fair shall now begin. Show your rosy faces and the hearts of two children. Attention, all of you. I desire a young woman to serve as a maid of all work in my house. She must be young and she must be pretty. Oh, dear, Sir Tristram, he's looking straight at me. Come, Lady Harriet, let us be gone. Wait! You, in the country homespun. You call to me, sir? Yes. What is your name, little serving girl? Uh, <clears throat> they call me Martha. Martha, indeed. Well, what can you do, my child? Well... I can sew, sir. I can mow, sir. I can bake and brew men things like you. Can mind a house and rule it, too. There's naught I cannot do. Worth five guineas, I will hire her. On my farm, I shall require her. She will come to work for me. But a high-born lady cannot go to work as a bond servant. It's not proper. I can turn, I can turn, I can turn, I can I can bake and broom and things like you. I wind up laughing, will not touch that old cannot do. I can dig well, do a pig well. I can see no harm comes to your farm. For every ill I know with charm of errors I reform. I can sow and mow and bake and brew and mend the things to look like you. And find the house and rule it too. There's not no, there is not to get a do. So the bargain's made. Done. Oh, 
Lady Harriet, do you realize what you've done? It's only a joke, Sir Tristram. A joke? By the law of England, you're bound to serve that man for a year. Come, Martha. Climb upon my hay wagon. We're off to my farm. There's only one thing to do. Make a dash for it. Try to get away. But I don't want to get away, Sir Tristram. What? I like him. <laughs> Good, Martha. Welcome to my house. Now, what are we going to have for dinner tonight? Nothing, sir. What? I've never been in a kitchen in my life. Oh, you prefer to work in the fields, then? Dirty my hands farming? I should say not. What? (laughs) What a servant. What a... At least you can spin. No, but I'm willing to learn. Oh, well, here... Sit down at the spinning wheel and I'll show you how it works. Oh, but fun! This may set the wheel of flying, set it whirring, set it flying. How oh, delightful oh, see oh, it flying, oh, worth the treadle oh, with a will. But I'm even fed you're flying, never let you wheel me still. Come, you will not lose the trying, I can see you have the will. While the golden thread is flying, sing a merry measure still, yes, sing a merry measure still. Fun, 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 fun. But you will not lose my trying, I can see you have good will. And you will not lose my trying, I can see you have good will, you have good will. Careful there. You'll tip over the wheel. Oh, dear, I'm so clumsy. Now, now, dear Martha, do not worry. You will learn. Kind and gentle is this to do a maid's work. All I can do is laugh and sing. Sing a song then. Please excuse me. Sing a song of days gone by. Sing a ballad from the heart. Not now. I, I insist. You insist? I... Pray you. Well, it seems I must obey you. Is the love you Let bloom in the Lord. All her love 
have been so touched by her voice or her song. It is late. May I retire to my room? Of course, my dear. Of course. May the angels watch above thee and thy scorning put to fly. For a lot is meant to love me for me. leave now before this madness goes any farther. You are right, Sir Tristram. I will hurt him if I leave, but I shall hurt him far more if I remain. For a lot is a moment, we'll return with Act Two of Martha. Farmer, businessman, engineer, soldier, statesman, president of the United States. George Washington's achievements and interests were immense and widely diversified. And not the least of these interests was transportation. For George Washington, perhaps the number one American tourist of his day, had a very keen insight into the essential role transportation would have to play if America were to achieve her destiny as one of the great powers of the earth. He saw that unless some way were found to overcome the enormous labor and tremendous cost of moving small quantities of goods by the muscles of men and animals, our settlements would never stray very far from water, and our production and consumption of goods would remain restricted largely to articles of subsistence and local origin. Unfortunately, the father of our country did not live to see the solution to the problem. That came some 30 years later, when the railroads succeeded in applying mechanical power to land transportation. And then, even Washington would have been amazed at the speed with which America expanded, once the railroads opened up the rich resources of the continent. In the track of the iron horse, agriculture flourished with ever-widening markets for its produce. Industry developed as raw materials were easily carried where they were needed, and finished goods were made readily available at prices people could afford. And today, a century later, America's railroads are still growing in strength, still setting new records for efficiency in their service. For there is nothing in existence and nothing in sight which can take the place of the train of cars on tracks ready to haul anything in any quantity over any distance between all sections of the country and in all seasons of the year. As a result, railroads haul more goods more miles than all other forms of transportation combined and their average charge is lower than that of any other form of general transportation. This is a wonderful and healthy sign for America, for it gives assurance that the best is yet to come, and that together, America and its railroads 
will continue to grow stronger and more productive than ever. Now, act two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Martha, starring Gordon McRae as Lionel and Gladys Swarthout in the title role. Martha, wake up, my pretty one. We'll have another lesson at the spinning wheel. Martha? Where is she? Martha! She's gone. I am lost now. Lost. everywhere for her. It was no use. Trees of the forest, tell me where is she? You do not seem to be enjoying the hunt. Surely you know why, Sir Tristram. We are close by the forest of Richmond. Where you played the servant maid for a week? Yes. For the happiest week of my life. Martha! Heaven save me, it is Lionel. Martha, you have come back. Sir, whom do you address as Martha? Why, this young lady. I hired her as a maidservant at Richmond Fair. The man is raving. <laughs> this is Lady Harriet. No. 
No, the dress is different. But the eyes and the face. It is my Martha. Uh, I think you are mistaken, sir. Tell me, lass. Do you remember me? We have never met before. You are my Martha. I am not. And I do not know if you are a high-born lady or a serving girl. But I know you have deceived me. My life thou wouldst destroy, t'was thy pleasure to deceive me, with my breaking heart to toy. Better so, my child. But if he could love me as a serving girl, may I not teach him to love me as a Lady Harriet? Pray no rash decisions, my lady. Good, Tristram. Will you go and search for him uh, and help me groom him for a proposal of marriage? Groom him? Ah, it is always my fate to be a groom, but never to a bride. Here is my plan. You will seek out Lionel and urge <laughs> Why, what is this place? What does it look like, sir? The banners, the gay crowds. I could swear that this is Richmond Fair. It is in your honor, sir, that the courtyard of our castle has been decked out as the fair at Richmond. In my honor? I, I don't understand. You will, my boy. You will. From the prince was young and old, the fair begins, the bell has told. I can tell, sir. I can tell, sir. I can make him true, and men like you can hang a house and rule it too. There's not a care not to. But a sheep and a sheep and a you sow and mow and bake and brew. If only half you say is true, we'll pay and thank you too. Well, choose yourself a young lady, sir. What say you to the lass over there in the dress of country homespun? Martha. Not Martha, sir. The Lady Harriet. But no less ready to do your bidding. Tell me, lass. Can you cook and spin and sew? What can you do? I can renounce, I can will be I shall have two brides and one love for both of them. Love's blessed enchantment, your heart shall restore, for I love thee forever. I love thee. Oh, 
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That is for a thought. We'll be back in just one moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to Carlton Young, who played Sir Tristram, and our entire company. Martha was prepared for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? There are few more wonderful sights in the world than the activity that goes on in a big and busy freight yard. The endless succession of heavily loaded freight cars moving out to every part of the country is not only fascinating to watch, but it gives a vivid picture of just how big and busy our nation really is. Box cars, refrigerator cars, flat cars, tank cars, gondolas, and hoppers. All are loaded with the things we eat, wear, and use every day of our lives. All engaged in the essential job of moving the nation's commerce and speeding our national defense. It's a big job. A railroad job. Thank you, Marvin. You're so right. And now, dear friends, here again is tonight's guest, the charming and delightful Gladys Swarthout. Thank you, Gordon. It's been quite a while since I've taken a trip on the show train, and it's good to be back. Well, Gladys, you have a standing invitation to join us at this microphone any Monday that you like. What's on the show train next week, Gordon? Listen. With all my heart, I long for you. I pray to make a song for you. That sounds like Johann Schroff. Yes, it is. It's the great waltz, Gladys. And charming Elaine Malvin will be our guest. And we'll all be listening. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Gladys. You were wonderful. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as if we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night and the great waltz, on behalf of the other members of the cast and the American Railroads, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying good night. <laughs> Martha was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. In the weeks ahead, the Railroad Hour will bring you such stories and stars as The Great Waltz with Elaine Malbin, Victor Herbert's classic The Red Mill with Eileen Farrell as guest, Lucille Norman as the bride of Tom Moore in The Minstrel Boy, and Miss Malbin returning to play the title role in Irene. Every Monday night, the American Railroads promise you an unforgettable evening of music on the show train. Gordon McRae can be seen in Three Sailors and a Girl in Technicolor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Tonight, the voice of Firestone features...